Hello, I'm Ian McLean. I'm a radio amateur, uh, VK3JQ. I work with Rockwell Collins Australia. We're in the aviation department. We repair all the aircraft navigation, communication equipment and audio systems as well. I started basically when I was about eight and I used to listen to an old AWA radiola radio at my grandmother's place. I'd sit in the dark with the glow of the, the valve radio in the corner and we had a knife switch over on the wall and I'd throw the knife switch down to antenna and it had come alive and I'd sit there for hours just listening to all these radio squeaks and squawks and stations and uh, the first radio station I remember I ever picked up was the Swiss Broadcasting Corporation and that really got me interested. I sort of wanted a radio at home so I could dabble at home as well and I don't know if you remember the old hard rubbish collections well my dad used to love them and we went out we'd look for things and we brought home an old radio I got it working put a we put a uh, an old uh, telephone receiver in place of where the speaker should have been and uh, that was the start I got that going and I'd listen to all the small ships services and I used to keep track of where all the ships were going. And then I found radio amateurs talking to each other. I found that interesting. And then I started to fiddle with the TV out in the lounge room while no one was looking. Now I found I could tune the TV turret across the two metre amateur band. And I could hear amateurs talking there as well. And I found I could pick up taxis and all sorts of things on the TV set. And this was a fascinating thing. From there, when I went to tech school, I met a real radio amateur, and that was uh, Gil Robinson, VK3VC, and he introduced me to real radio, and this was amazing. It was really good. So I did an elective subject twice. I swapped with another guy, so I could do it twice. And I learnt all my Ohm's Law, and I learnt all the ins and outs of radio and everything, and then from there I left school and immediately went into AWA. And I started there as an apprentice in 1974. What is AWA? The Amalgamated Wireless Australasia. And to most people, it's an ancient company. It began a long time ago. The annals of history, I guess you could say. It was started by Ernest Fisk, who came to Australia and he saw the need for communication with shipping. And I think that's what the root was he decided to set up the company so that ships could communicate at sea and they could actually communicate with land and that's basically where it all began AWA started a valve industry in Australia as AWA were the prime producer of radios AWA were involved with setting up the aviation industry basically so AWA controlled virtually the radios you had on your plane and people were starting to move around people were wanting to go places f to fly so the aviation industry was starting to pick up AWA were at the forefront they were there they were uh, setting up radios for uh, avionics Kingsford Smith I believe had an AWA radio on board when he flew AWA were the prime group that went ahead with the idea and developed distance measurement equipment using pulse technology. And it was called secondary radar because it was similar to a radar, but it was controlled. You knew what was supposed to happen. And when that pulse came back, the, the unit would calculate your distance from the transmitter to the receiver and back again. This was a world first. No one else was doing that at the time. AWA is a, was a world leader in avionics, uh, communications and electronics. I think uh, Australian aviation is one of the safest in the world. What AWA used to do was they had an apprenticeship scheme where they took on four apprentices per year and they trained them in the art of electronics and avionics. They put me through schooling at RMIT. I used to go to Building 9 a lot, for those that may have been going there in the past that might remember. And I used to have a radio shack up on the top of the, the building and we used to go up there at lunchtime and muck around. 
and we went out into the field with the airlines, which were ANSET and TAA at the time. I went into the TAA camp and I learnt everything about the TAA aircraft. Uh, we would all then travel across to ANSET to go for lunch because the TAA canteen wasn't all that crash hot. That's another story. The apprenticeship scheme was brilliant where our training was for four days per week and we would go in for roughly half a day, usually the Wednesday, to pick up our paycheck and learn a bit about the workshop. Then at the end of three years, after we'd already caught up to the year that was ahead of us, we, we settled down into a steady pace and we were doing their subjects with them. We also trained with the RAAF boys from there. They went to school with us, so we were joining in with their classes. So we really did get a good mix of people uh, to, to train with. Getting an apprenticeship in the aviation and electronics industry was relatively easy. You could just pick up the paper any weekend and you'd see a job advertised for a radio apprentice or uh, some sort of electronics apprenticeship was available and uh, it was plentiful. It was uh, a time that I cherish because it was an introduction to everything. My whole world opened up and it was wonderful. At the same time, I watched a bit of a decline in AWA. It started to slide. And as years went by, pieces of the company sort of dropped off. AWA finally hit the wall with the Forex losses. That was the last we sort of knew of AWA as a proper company. It sort of got broken up and then we got taken over by British Aerospace. And then British Aerospace made us a lean, mean machine. Then from there we got put on the market and um, put up for bids. And there were three bidders. There was Honeywell, Rockwell, and I um, can't think of the third one, but anyway. Rockwell won, we became Rockwell Collins and we moved out of the old workshop in King Street Airport West and we moved up to Sharps Road in Tullamarine. The, the Rockwell Collins group um, started with Arthur Collins and he built a radio in his basement and someone said, hey, that's a good idea, let's take it further. He grew from there, grew from a basement workshop with people wanting the radios and they were very good quality and he was looking for the best of everything and he was building things from scratch. And then that was reflected when someone else would get this radio and go, hey, look what he's done, look how he's done it. Let's copy that or make it better. So there was someone else always experimenting, changing the radio in some way and moving it into the next level. And that's basically my history.